Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today. Alan, first time on the show. Yeah, Rick Allen from Def Leppard. Fantastic. Nice introduction. Yo. Hey, Rick, the first time <laughs> I saw you, Pyromania headline tour. Uh, back in uh, 1983, June 9th, here in Montreal with Crocus and Gary Moore opening. So I think that was pretty early in the tour. Oh, that's cool. Uh, is that where you are? You're up in Montreal? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, my, my wife's family, we have, uh, uh, or they have a, a, a small cabin up in the Adirondacks. So, uh, okay, that's not far. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 we, we love coming across the border and visiting Montreal. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, cool. yeah. very, very cool. Uh, good news, uh, Rick Allen, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read this because I think it's it's important. Legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee from Def Leppard will be making two special appearances next month at the Wentworth Gallery, one in Atlantic City, and the other one at King of Prussia, which is I believe Pennsylvania. Correct? It is. Yeah. To celebrate the newest creations, Allen will appear on Saturday, July 10th. At the Wentworth in uh, in Atlantic City at the Hard Rock Casino, and then July 11th at the Prusa Mall. These events are open to the public, and the new and extraordinary collection, uh, limited editions, the drum series, the uh, mixed media originals, plus the Legends series. Van Halen. Is that a great introduction? I just read right <laughs> off of it. No, no, no. It's it's, it's great. It, it'll actually be. Uh... I did uh, I did some in-person uh, art shows uh, recently in uh, South uh, Florida, um, like Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton, and Hollywood, Florida. I did three shows. And it's the first time I've ever done uh, them since uh, March of uh, last year. So mm -hmm. it was cool to get out there and amongst the people again. You know, you can tell people, people really want to get out there and do something. So um, it was it was it was uh, it was pretty special, you know, doing that. So this is really just a continuation of that. Um, you know, when 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 we heard that the tour was going to get pushed again, um, I was like, well, you know, I may as well do uh, do the entire sort of uh, Wentworth uh, gallery tour. So so that's that's kind of what I'm what I'm planning on doing. Yeah, very, very cool. Alan? What's what's uh, you know your Wings of Hope 2021? That's tied into a charity. You want to talk a bit about that? Uh, well, all the pieces, uh, all the proceeds from all the pieces go to uh, various uh, projects um, under the under the umbrella of uh, Raven Drum. Um, Project Resiliency is really focused on you know the suffering of uh, of some of our wounded warriors. Um, not, not too many people know this, but I, I suffer from PTSD myself, um, not through combat uh, trauma, but uh, you know, through you know, a, a terrible car accident. And uh, I remember in 2006 going to uh, Walter Reed Army Medical Center in the DC area. And uh, I was just really shocked, you know, the amount of suffering. So uh, when I got when I got back to my hotel, I called my wife. I said, you know, we, we need to refocus. So that's when we came up with Project Resiliency. And uh, I just saw a lot of the same traits, a lot of the same triggers uh, in them uh, that I did in myself. So uh, I've, I've been kind of passionate about that ever since. You know, Rick, uh, Steve Gribbett, one of our friends here of the show, who uh, and, and from Grim Reaper, who you probably know, uh, who came probably along the same time Def Leppard was coming up, he lost his leg in, in Ecuador, you know, in a different way, but in the same, you know, it's, it was a loss. And he told me that only years later did the post-traumatic stress hit him hard. I mean, was that your case that it happened right away or was it just years later? Um, I wasn't aware of it. And, um, the first time I met uh, a chap called uh, John Roberts uh, that works with Wounded Warrior Project, um, he, he straight out asked me, he said, have you addressed your PTSD? And I said, is it that obvious? 
And um, I think it was from that point on that I became more aware of, of, of some of, uh, I just thought I was an asshole before my accident, just a bigger <laughs> asshole after the accident. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, I must but be sorry. suffering people from PTSD <laughs> no, as well. <laughs> right now, something must have happened Jimmy, in my life. <laughs> Jimmy, you should make a phone call, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it revealed itself. And... Um, Actually, now I, I do a very strict uh, strict regime of uh, neurofeedback, which uh, which which helps me. Uh, actually, neurofeedback and alpha theta uh, therapy, which uh, is uh, you know neurofeedback is about building new neural pathways, and then the alpha theta work uh, really helps with uh, it's like just deep meditation. It's uh, and that, that seems to help calm my, uh, my nervous system. And, and then I'm very fortunate to live out in the middle of nowhere. So um, I think being in nature, uh, being in the, in the presence of something that's bigger than yourself uh, is also a big help. Um, standing in front of an ocean, looking up at the cosmos, uh, being in a, a forest or, you know, all, all these things I help, I think help you know, sort of uh, manage uh, this condition. Um, the, the, the more calm I can keep my nervous system, uh, the less triggers I uh, encounter. Wow, fascinating. So you know, we mentioned off the top that you're a Hall of Fame member, but again, you know, a lot of, uh, through your charity work, a lot of uh, humanitarian awards, you know, like the, the Best Buddies, uh, Maria Shriver's Best Buddies, and of course the Wounded Warrior Project's Carry It Forward Award as well. What, what for you is, is more important when it comes to these types of accolades? Um, I think the people that it, that, it, that it touches, the people that it, that it, that it potentially inspires, um, you know, we all need uh, we all need that human interaction, and I think during COVID, it really highlighted the fact that we are social beings. And yeah. you know, I heard about a lot of um, issues with uh, with mental health, um, uh, so much so that uh, my wife came my wife came up with an idea for big love benefit concerts and. Uh, I called, I called some people that I knew. I called Tommy Shore. I called uh, Billy Idol, uh, Matt Sorum, um, and Matt got in touch with Miles Kennedy. And all these people jumped on board. And we, we put a virtual concert together that raised money for uh, an organization called Sweet Relief. And, uh, you, know, they, they, you know, they help industry profession, uh, professionals. Um, the, the ripple effect that went out into our industry was just devastating. So it was cool because it, it gave it gave us both a focus, you know, during the pandemic, and um, you know, it, it 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 became very rewarding, you know, because it, it would have been very easy for me to have become uh, really depressed. So again, you know, if you if you suffer from any sort of depression or whatever, it, it sometimes it's very difficult to explain to somebody else what that is and what that looks like. So I think because because I've gone through uh, my own experience of it, um, I think I think that's that's the that's the real real reason why I do it is is to to try and inspire people to you know to ask for help. You know, it does. It's not a, show, a, a sign of weakness to to ask for help. You know what I mean? Let's talk about the art now. And and okay. you know what? You know, and, and I'll tell you this quickly, Rick. I remember the day you lost your arm, like where they announced it. I was at a I was at a club, a, you know, a hard rock club, and they announced it. It was just like, a, and I'm sure Alan remembers too. It was just, it was just shocking. You know, you guys were just. It was just everything was going so well for you for the band, you know. I know. I, I just wanted to share that. That's all. Uh, let's That's talk cool. about your art. Let's talk more positive. I don't want to, you know. Oh no, 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 no! It's good. It, it, we've got to look at the shadows sometimes, though, in, in order to move forward. You know, sometimes it goes that way. What Not can... to live in the shadows, but to acknowledge that they're there. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I didn't just didn't mean to pry. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's, it's a part of me, you know? Yeah. 
the art. Okay, what can people expect to see? For, for someone who doesn't know you're an artist, what they can they ex why should they go to the art gallery? What can they expect to see in terms of your artwork? Well, to see me, of course. Well, they're okay. Well, after that. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> no, I, th I, think, uh, I think the Legend series is really interesting because it's really, um, it's like a, a history of all the people that, that um, inspired me and, and probably the reason why I became a musician in the first place. Um, the first one I did was uh, Steve Clark, who, you know, was was with right. Def Leppard and sadly we lost him. Um, I miss him every day. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the first one I tried out. That was probably about four, four or five years ago. And um, I sent a picture of it to my mom, who happens to keep in touch with Steve's mom. And uh, I got a huge compliment from her. She said, you know, uh, Rick really captured Steve's essence. And, you know, uh, so that kind of inspired me to keep going. Um, so then I, I got into um, Jimi Hendrix, uh, John Lennon. Uh, I mean, there've been, there've been so many along the way, uh, Prince. And then more, re more recently, uh, I did a Johnny Cash, which is really cool. I actually didn't want to let go of that one. It was really nice. <laughs> And then uh, I did a, a really cool uh, Kurt Cobain, which I was very proud of. And then, and then uh, I did two Eddie Van Halens and they were extremely well received to the point where I think those two pieces were sold um, before I even finished them. Oh, wow. So, yeah, um, but uh, short story. Uh, so uh, 1978, my friend calls me, he says, uh, he says, I've got this new record that I want you to listen to. And it's great. Uh, come on over. So, you know, I went around, he only lived three doors up. So um, he put on uh, Van Halen's first album. And it was the first time I'd heard it. And it just completely blew me away. I'd never heard anybody play guitar like that. And uh, just the, the, the the musicianship within the band, you know, they really set the bar very high. Um, and then a couple of months later, uh, they were coming through town, uh, opening up for Black Sabbath. And um, to be honest, uh, Van Halen, they own that show. Um, you know, you could see Black Sabbath, the, the wheels were coming off a little bit and uh, it, it wasn't the same. I'd seen them plenty of times, but, uh, you know, you, 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 saw, you saw Van Halen on this trajectory and then like Sabbath, you could see that thing, things, weren't, things weren't that good, but it didn't take away anything from Van Halen. It was, it was just the most incredible performance, uh, very hungry, um, just incredible, uh, you know, showman. Um, and then uh, 1991, I moved to uh, the States and I became friendly with a guy called Steve Lukather from, um, from Toto. Yeah. Anyway, he called me one night and he said, uh, we're having a get together. We'd love for you to come down. And I want to introduce to my friend, Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> so, so I went and met up with them and uh, I met up with uh, Eddie. He was really unassuming, very, very humble. You would never think that he did what he did for a living. Did he know um, who you were? Um, he did, and there was a mutual respect. Um, oh. But I was super starstruck, you know. I, uh, you know, having followed him, you know, for that whole time, uh, you know, as a kid, and then, you know, and then finally getting to meet him, it was it was fantastic. So paying homage to him and his family, I thought, what better way to do that than to than to paint him. And um, I got fantastic response. People, people were really kind. And um, it's really just, you know, paying homage to him and his family and the millions of fans that, uh, you know, that, uh, that love Van Halen. So, you know, you, you mentioned all these singer guitarists. When are you going to paint some drummers? Uh, no, I just well, thought of that. I just, <laughs> That's true, uh, Alan. Just, o just over a year ago, I guess uh, we lost Neil Peart. Uh, yes. Um, I was actually I was actually at uh, the same place that I just was in Florida. I was at the the Hard Rock Hotel in uh, in Hollywood, uh, Florida, 
the, the one with the giant guitar and everything. And uh, I, I heard the news while I was there. And every spare moment that I had, I would just sit and listen to, to Rush. And uh, wow. it, it really, it really hit me, you know, it was, uh, it was such a massive loss. And, you know, because he was such a private person, you know, uh, none of us really got to, got to find out anything about, you know, his, his condition. Um, but- um, Did you ever meet him? Um, I did, uh, briefly, we, we, we shared the same rehearsal space. So, um, so we, we met, we met on occasion. Um, but yeah, that, that was one of those, uh, occasions where I was just so deeply, uh, uh, yeah, sort of shocked by the whole situation that I, uh, that was the first thing I did when I got home was I started a, a Neil Peart uh, painting. And oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really cool. And, you know, all these pieces, you know, I get started on them. And then by the time I'm three quarters of the way through, I don't want to let them go. <laughs> They're like your babies, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'd sell all this art and I don't have one piece uh, hanging in the in the house, you know, take like, some pictures. <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> photocopy them. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer, Jim. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, um, let's. Can we flip to some Def Leppard? Uh, just, just sort of, just do. I know a lot of people are curious about. Are you guys working on any new album or uh, anything going on there? There's always new music on the go, and uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, in the not too distant future you know, we'll be able to present that. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, I think that's one of the nice things about technology these days is that, you know, we can be, we can be all over the planet and still uh, sharing ideas or, you know, uh, coming up with new songs. So yes, that's, 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 that's a given. It's always, it's always something that we, we pride ourselves in is the fact that we come up with new music and we don't, you know, we don't try and try and rest on, on, you know, Christmas past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, I mean, if you want to, could we ask you a couple more Def Leppard uh, questions? I got a lot of friends asking a lot of stuff. Have you yeah, ever, of course, of course you can. Pete Willis, you know, which I love, you know, his playing on the first two album. Was there any contact with him over the years or, any, you know, any, I, I don't. I guess it ended didn't end well. I guess at that time or it, at that comment? time it did. That time it didn't. But uh, but it, I mean, if you heard Joe's speech from the Hall of Fame, yeah, yeah. Um, I I thought it was beautiful the way that it, it included everybody that was anything to do with the success of Def Leppard, and agreed. I think I think that the tone of of of, of you know that speech kind of sums up what we're about and you know there's there's no there's no long lasting sort of animosity towards anybody you know um you know if you were part of this thing and for whatever reason you couldn't hang on to the reins you know that's your fair game you know what i mean um because it, it's it's not as glamorous as you would think um you know um spending lots of time away from home and you know, just just keeping up, getting up on that stage, and 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 doing what we do, it, it it's work, you know. So, um, you know, it just so happened that that Pete he didn't do well, you know, when we got out on the road. Um, he was fine when he got home, um, but uh, but no, there's no animosity, you know. Um, in fact, Pete Pete was very welcoming when I when I first joined the band. You know, I wasn't I wasn't the first drummer. Tony Kenning was the first drummer, and I answered a. Um, it was a actually it was a, a newspaper article, a local newspaper, and uh, the heading was uh, "Leopard Loses Skins," and uh, <laughs> I guess Tony was more interested in his girlfriend than rehearsing with the band. So. Um, I called up the uh, the newspaper and um, got Joe's information. And uh, within a few days, I met with Joe and Steve at a local club. And then we realized that we'd been to all the same concerts together. And 
you know, we probably rubbed shoulders. And, um, and then within a couple of days after that, I, I went and auditioned. Um, Tony came back, he wanted his job. There was another guy um, and uh, I decided I wanted to go last. Um, and uh, by the time I'd heard the two of them play, uh, I'd kind of got the parts down pretty good. And uh, when I played, there were smiles all around the room and I, I you know, I, I, got, I got the gig. But my point being is Pete Willis was so welcoming. You know, he, he, was, he was kind of the first person to really, you know, just, just put my mind at ease and, uh, and just very kind words. So uh, I'll always be, uh, be thankful to Pete for that. That's I nice. just realized That's something. Nice. It's funny how uh, Dennis Stratton would have been inducted with Iron Maiden, but Pete wasn't inducted with you. And I think he no, had he a much was. larger role. Yes, oh, he, he was. was. Okay. He was. Oh, great, he was. great, great. He was. He just didn't, he wasn't there, but he was inducted. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's we, right. we, we asked him. We asked him. Uh, we, we did all the right things. You know, we, we uh, like I say, you know, it's all inclusive. You know, you can't take that away from anybody. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, 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 we asked, we did all the right things. Um, um, you know, he was very happy for us, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, obviously declined uh, to, to, to be there. Yeah. But when I, uh, when I was preparing for this, something that, that struck me was, you know, like we, here in Canada, we had Robbie Backman with BTO right out of high school. Uh, we had uh, Johnny Faye with the tragedy hip right out of high school, right into the profession. And, and you were very, very young when you started out as well. Looking back, would you have rather started out at the age that you did or, or a little bit later in life? You're getting uh, the touring and the, the success. No, I think I think it was a good time. It was a good time to 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 get into it. Um, you know, I'd been I'd been playing probably from the age of about nine nine and a half ten, and um, you know, I uh, it was interesting. My my friend got a guitar for Christmas, and I was I was so jealous. Um, so the first thing I asked when I got home was, you know, could I could I get a drum kit? <laughs> of course, the answer was no. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we can't afford it, uh, that kind of thing, uh, which was true, you know. Um, but uh, my parents rethought their position and uh, they said, okay, if you help around the house or if you help in the neighborhood, you make some extra money um, and go get lessons. That was, the, that was the main criteria. I had to go get drum lessons. We'll, we'll get you a drum kit on layaway. And that's, uh, that's exactly what they did. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I was, I was, I was very fortunate that, uh, that, that I was able to, uh, I was able to get a drum kit. And by the time I got the drum kit, because I'd been doing the lessons, I could actually play a little bit. So, uh, so yeah. that was, that was huge. You know what, you're truly an inspiration. Um, I was watching the web series. Oh man, it was like a, I, I don't even think it was accurate. The Def Leppard, uh, there was a, a doc. A, like a, oh, Def, like, Le Def Leppard story. Yeah, yeah. The Def Leppard story. I don't know how accurate that was, but I didn't feel accurate. There was the part when you guys were recording Pyromania and Mutt Lang was just kind of grinding everybody. I mean, how, how, how much truth was in that recording process of Pyromania to the point where I was reading that the engineer said they're basically reverse engineering the songs where the drums were on last. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, how much truth was that where, you know, you were, you must've been upset, you know, here you are the drummer and they're just putting in the drums on last and they had this new technology with the drum machines and. Well, what, what, what I, what I tended to, to do was because the songs were evolving as we were in the studio. So it seemed easier to me to, you know, to put down a basic drum track or a drum machine and then to go back in and punctuate the songs afterwards, um, instead of trying to second guess what the songs were going to become. Um, so that was really the 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 reasoning behind that. Um, it was just more convenient in, instead of having to agonize over you know trying to get the drums right in the first place. Um, and then you know it became a high a hybrid. Um, you know, some of the drum machine remained and then, you know, I would overdub things or go back in and redo. It was whatever the song needed. And, and that's kind of, it. Would, 
pyromania and hysteria were complete, they were like uh, experiments, experiments in how, how, to, how to record, uh, different ways to record. Uh, how to come up with uh, hit songs, you know, and just oh, you know, groundbreaking, groundbreaking. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but uh, the, uh, the Def Leppard story, I feel was, it was pretty accurate, but the, the things that weren't so accurate were the characters themselves. Like for instance, Mutt Lang, he's a very quiet, shy individual. If you ever look up, try and look up a photograph of Mutt Lang online. Uh, every picture I see is from 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's very private. And, That's true. Uh, That's true. and the way that he would, uh, he, would, he would challenge you, but in a way where you would challenge yourself. It wasn't like cracking the whip. It was more, he would push you to the limits of your physical and mental ability. And it was more that you would challenge yourself as opposed to Mutt Lang directly challenging you to, to do it better. So, yeah. and, and he, I mean, he was the, one of the sweetest guys I, you know, I've ever encountered. I mean, he was very instrumental in my recovery. Uh, I remember he came to see me in the hospital and um, <clears throat> I was vegetarian. So was he. And, um, um, you know, he said, what's the food like in here? And, and I'm like, Ugh, you know, they just kind of <laughs> take the meat off and, and you get soggy vegetables, you know what I mean? So he, uh, he, he had this association with the, uh, uh, with the Harry Krishnas down in London. And he had this couple, Padma and Quipper, he had them drive up to Sheffield to where the hospital was. And they would... Uh, prepare food for me every single every single day and uh and he was really generous he he uh you know he obviously don donated uh, money to uh, harry krishna for them to come and do that for me but I, I think that was a huge part of my uh my recovery was the fact that i uh, i got fed extremely well and it was funny they would come in the entire ward smelled like an indian restaurant <laughs> and and they would proceed to feed everybody in the hospital. Oh, you know, well. it was it was it was so cool. It was really cool. So yes, Matt Lang, just one of those human beings that is is just an example, you know, for all of us. So, you know, you know, Rick, me and Alan can talk to you like all day. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're <laughs> like thousands of now. questions, but I know there's a time limit here. Oh, really? and, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, all I'm all I need to do is figure out when my next uh, when my next one is, and then let me just have a quick look, and then all and, right, and then we'll see how how we how we are. Oh, so tomorrow, so we can talk until tomorrow at nine a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We won't. We won't. We'll just ask you one or two questions, and we'll we'll let you go. On we won't that. take no. We problem. won't take about it. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was thinking. I thought you were serious there for a second. There, I'll just get comfortable in the bunk bed. Let me get a hit. pillow. <laughs> Alan, what do you want to say? No, just with all your charity work, if there's any links or any you want us to put on the, the website and the, and the show when we launch it, we'd be happy to do so. Any of the oh, charity. Cool. Uh, well, there's always, uh, there's always, uh, um, let's see. Um, you know, inst Instagram is always good. Rick Allen Live, uh, rickallen.com uh, or wentworthgalleries.com. Um you know, they, they always have all the shows, uh, the art shows that are coming up. They always have those posted on, uh, on their, uh, on their website. Um, yeah. And, uh, I, I think that's, I think that's, yeah, I think that's about it. You're probably, you know, Rick, what about bringing your art to Canada? Is there, is there issues with going over the border with the art? Is, is that what it is? No, it's, it's the fact. Come that to Montreal or we're, I'd love I to go know, see your art I show. Would, I would it's love good. to. I would love to, uh, but I have this exclusive uh, relationship with uh, with Wentworth, uh. and you know it's convenient for me because all I do, you know, I produce the art and then I send it off to you know head office in Miami, and they distribute the the artwork amongst all their uh, galleries, 
Uh, but the only thing is, it's, it's an exclusive sort of deal. Um, now, one thing that the gallery have started doing more recently, uh, which I think is really cool, um, like for instance, um, I'd mentioned the, the Hard Rock Hotel uh, in Hollywood, uh, Florida. Um, they happen to have a gallery inside the, uh, the casino. Um, <clears throat> and then they've done the same, of course, with uh, Atlantic City. That's a, another hard rock. So I think the trend is, is that they're, they're starting to move into more sort of hard rock hotel casino type uh, venues. So th th there's a good chance that that trend will, will, will kind of, uh, you know, move north of the border. Uh, right. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. That's a good strategy. Yeah. 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 We've got well casinos here. We've got casinos here. We've got uh, whatever you need. Um, we got yeah, I rock. know, I know, I know Canada very well. I know this. Everything. What's your What's your everything fondest memory home. of Montreal? Playing Montreal. What's your fondest? I saw you on the last tour, by the way. I saw um, you and Def Leppard. Not you personally, but I saw Def Leppard. Great show at the the Bell I Center. What are your What are your fondest memories of playing Montreal for all the Montreal fans out there? I'll keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the, the crowd in Montreal, um, and, and not too many people realize this, that per capita, we're probably bigger in Canada than anywhere else on the planet. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe that. And yeah. did you know that the birth rate spiked when Hysteria was released? <laughs> I in, ca it. in Canada, I, 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 I'm sure in Montreal it really. I think, yeah, yeah. Was, so a few charge. women were watching those videos, and I think they uh, went home happy after after turning off the TV. So yeah. I believe yeah. more yeah. than happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys are most, good, most yeah. of them got rid of their TVs after that. <laughs> uh, the guys will say that's it. Yeah, no more MTV. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, in all uh, seriousness, I think. A Montreal crowd for us is probably the loudest thing that we've ever heard. They were, I think they were somewhere in the region of about 110 decibels. And, and, and we, were, we were having a hard time, or a sound engineer was having a hard time competing with the sheer volume of the crowd up there. Yeah, I can attest to that. I was there and I can attest to that. Yeah, I was yeah. there too, yeah, with the yeah. Tesla and Poison, I think, opened that one, so... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so you guys have got that going for you. Uh, you know, the, the, the cool thing about, about, you know, up there in Canada is people definitely aren't afraid to have a good time. And, yeah. and that is, that's, that's a good quality. <laughs> Saturday, July 10th at Wentworth Gallery at the Hard Rock Hotel in Atlantic City. And then July 11th in Pennsylvania at the King of Prusa Mall, the one and only, the drummer, and the artiste, Rick <laughs> Allen of Def Leppard. Rick, if you ever get around to painting a fill in it, uh, let me know. Hey, that's a good one. That's a that's a really good suggestion. I like that. Yep. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. it would be a great. Yeah. To, uh, anxious to see it. So, again, it thanks for your time, Rick. What a pleasure was talking to you, and uh, just uh, all the best and the success, and uh, let's raise a lot of money for these great charities. That's cool, man. Uh, you guys are very gracious. Thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward to see you guys uh, in the not too distant future. Hopefully, yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.